Very good. Janet and I are doing Firebrand Pass today. It is October 12th. And this is our third time on it, but not, we, I have never done it in the fall. Janet has. So this will be interesting. I wanted to say, um, I haven't knit in a week. <laughs> and you know what? I've. She's a slacker. I've been a little cranky. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you, I have been a little cranky, and it got me to thinking. And I looked it up this week. Is uh, can you get addicted to knitting? Yeah, because you know I've talked to Janet. Janet and I have talked before, and, and we're like, you know, something we do when we get up in the morning is, what are we gonna knit today? You know, what's what's got us excited to knit today? I found this article that says, Ac academically, there is little on knitting addiction. In an unpublished thesis by Christiana Krogan, she noted in one paragraph that someone named Baird supports the theory that knitting alters brain chemistry, lowering stress hormones and boosting the production of serotonin and dopamine. Dittrich argues that while there are many benefits associated with knitting, there is also a health risk of the possible development of carpal tunnel syndrome, which we all know. Research suggests knitting may also have an addictive quality that Corkhill considers to be a constructive addiction that may replace other more severe harmful addictions. That's good. Marer interviewed professional women who knit during lunch hours and found a consistent theme of relief from anxiety and a sense of clear-headedness at work. Marr also found patients with severe illnesses such as cancer experience a greater sense of coping when they knit. And all you have to do is go look at the Joey Scarf podcast to hear all about that. Um, and yeah, I think that's really true. I, I feel the same way about hiking. I find it almost addictive uh -huh. and it um, makes me feel good. Yeah. But I have missed my knitting for a week. Uh, we'll talk more about what knitting does for you as we get on this hike. <laughs>
Okay, so I'll put down uh, below in the description box um, the links to everything I talk about here. Uh, this is from Sheep and Stitch. Knitting reduces stress. We know that, right? Uh, most of the time, <laughs> the rhythmic rep repetitive movements induce a form of uh, meditation similar to mindfulness. Knitters find they can zone out and escape into the sanctuary of a quiet mind. I think that's really true. You can comment on any of these, Janet. And I'm keeping an eye out for bears on the trail. Okay, good. Me too. <laughs> Knitting can help kids read. At the Alternative Waldorf School, first graders learn how to knit before they learn to read. See, I should be teaching Russell how to knit. Wow. The process of knitting is like threading a story. Kids are learning focus and concentration. They're gaining fine motor skills needed for writing. They're seeing patterns. They're moving from left to right the same way you read, and they're gaining confidence. Oh, that's great, right? Knitting may help keep Alzheimer's at bay. Knitting teaches important life skills. There's a program called Knitting Behind Bars that teaches um, knitting to inmates in a minimum security prison in Maryland. Um, over 400 inmates have gone through their weekly knitting class and they note lower rates of violence among the men who knit. Uh, what do they knit, you ask? They knit comfort dolls for traumatized children and hats for themselves, their own children, and loved ones. And they did quote um, a couple of the men that were in that program, and then they said they loved it. And they, in, they, <laughs> they kind of bully other men in the prison to come knit with them. Because they say, the, the two people that come in and teach them to knit, they said it's so wonderful to be treated like human beings. You know, when you're in prison, yeah. you do what you're told when you're told. Right. I'm going to do everything. And they said they just really loved it. Um, two more. Knitting helps overcome addiction. The key is in swapping a truly self-destructive addiction for the relatively tame addiction of knitting. And the last one, knitting encourages community. No knitter is an island. Today, from Ravelry to local knitting groups, knitting is more social than ever. I will also link to a funny knitting addiction article below that's, that might be worth your read. And I recently, since I got back on Facebook, joined a uh, group of people called Addicted to Knitting, which is kind of fun. It's a pretty good group because they, they make you, um, they approve everything that's posted before it posts. So I kind of like that. Oh. Well, they do that to keep out the crazies. Yeah. Janet's like, what? Uh, yeah, because there's a lot of those. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Where we're going is right behind me. Um, we've been seeing snow on the trail, and we're hoping it doesn't get worse. Uh, it's a little chilly out, but it feels really good for hiking. So um, we'll see you up the top.
Janet, good hike, right? Oh, very good hike. We're almost out. We can see Janet's car from here, so. We can smell the chrome. We can smell the chrome. <laughs> That's exactly right. Gosh, it was a pretty hike. Uh, but we saw more people on it than we'd ever seen before. Oh, I don't think we're, uh, our lighting's not very good, didn't oh. we? We saw like, would you count, 12? Yeah. I think at the most before we've seen four. Yeah, very few people on this hike usually. But it was in the paper, um, touted again as another good fall hike. So maybe that's what people saw and they decided to do it. Mm-hmm. But it was really nice. I had a good time. Yes, the weather was good. The weather was really good. Gosh, even the view from here is really pretty. Somebody saw a moose on the way in. But I didn't stab them with my walking stick <laughs> when they told us that. So that was pretty nice of me. <laughs> I usually try to warn people not, not to say things like that around Whisper us. that. Don't tell her you saw something cool. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. the car waits. Yes, and here come the boys. The boys are next. <laughs>Fire's nice, right? If you want to know that, if you got it, right step on in, big step up in. This is Russell and Nico. Russell and Nico. Hi, Russell. Yes. And Nico. I don't know. What do you call a carved pumpkin? A um, what? Oh, lantern. Jack-o'-lantern, have you ever heard of that? Yeah. Yeah? Well, his name's not Jack, it's Fred. <laughs> so Fred's going to be up here with us. <laughs> All right? Okay. He gets a little scared. Oh. He doesn't have any guts. <laughs> <laughs> you are so weird. Ray Pumpkin! Ray Pumpkin! Ray Pumpkin! Ray Pumpkin! You guys haven't seen the great pumpkin around, have you? No. No. <laughs> Make sure he's not in your car. He's not that
That's a warm up. <laughs> we're on a new hike. We're going to Doris Lakes, we think. Maybe Doris Mountain. We'll see. Uh, we haven't been here before. We have our orange hats on, courtesy of Janet, because it is hunting season. And we would like to not get shot today. It's been a rough road up here. <laughs> Let's see if it's worth it. Four wheel drive road. Yeah, four wheel drive. <laughs> Trying to show the effort we're going to oh. for this hike. Do you have stabilization on that? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jumping around like crazy. <laughs> a good sign. Stop it. So far we're not impressed. It's a bunch of downhill. And downhill at the beginning just means uphill at the end when you're worn out. It is very pretty though. It is it is kind of pretty, isn't it? Yeah. I'm enjoying it. Approaching what we think is Doris Lake.
running. I wanted to show my olive branch tea. This is by Twin Stitches Designs. I really like the way it turned out. I will insert a picture of it uh, on me, which will make more sense. It's a little too chilly out here to... Come on, strip! <laughs> strip I really like it. Now, I'll put at the bottom uh, the yarn I used. It was from uh, the Yarniness. Now, this is knit two through the back loop, purl two through the back loop on the edging. Mm -hmm. um, and it really killed my hands. That really hurt. Uh, do it there, and then you do it on these. But I was reading about why why they have you do that. It really makes the, um, the knit stand up really nicely. They really raise right up there. Yeah, they do. Uh, and there's, and I read that if you're having a problem with your socks or whatever, not staying up, yeah, do the knit two through the back loop, purl two through the back loop. It makes the ribbing tighter. I was not aware of that, but just, uh, yeah, it did bother my hands. Now, I think I might make another one of these because I really liked it and it was easy and it fits really nicely. So I'll probably I'll probably do that again. I might I might do something like a plain color up here so you can see see the design better. Yeah. And then move into something else down here because mm -hmm. I think it would be nice if you could see that design. I finished this um, quite a while back because I have I still haven't been knitting because my arm has still been bothering me. So I've um, still been taking a break, but I thought I would show that to you guys. And then last time when Janet and I were at um, firebrand hiking. Uh, I we got back and I had a huge hole in this bag right here. It was about that big around. I about fainted because I was afraid that my phone could have fallen out. It could have. So I got home. I just used a needle with some of this yarn on it. Wove it in and out and in and out both ways. Threw it through the washer again on hot with a pair of jeans. And then to double make sure it doesn't do that again, I did this really horrible looking lining <laughs> with jeans. Now it's not pretty. I, I don't know how to sew well and I don't have a machine. So I just cut it to fit, hand stitch the top, and then I stitch it a, a little bit through the bottom so it wouldn't come up. And I think that's going to work. Um, I was panicked when I saw that because I'm like, I could have lost my phone and now I can't knit and I need to make myself a new bag. But I told Kim, I says, I'm going to try to fix this. And I think it worked out pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. I'll throw in uh, before pictures. Uh, that's how it looks now. It looks pretty darn good. But I'll throw in pictures of what it looked like when I started it. Alright, Doris Lakes was a decent hike. We're not going to get a great workout out of it. No. But it was, it's nice. It was, it's really pretty. It was smoky, as you guys will have seen from the pictures. Smoke has moved back in. It moved back in on, what, Monday? Something like that. I think it might have been Monday. Yeah. Yeah, because I was talking to my son and daughter-in-law on Sunday, and they said Seattle was just swamped with smoke. And I said, oh, we're just fine here. <laughs> And then Monday, just wait a day or two. Yeah, Monday it just came in like crazy. So it would have been a lot prettier up there. But um, it was it's still nice to get out. We only saw two people on this hike. They were hunters, that's what they said. Bird hunting season is open. Um, but uh, that, that was all we saw. It's been cool and a little windy, but it's been good. It's been pretty out here. I really enjoyed it. It's been a good hike. Anything you want to add? No. No? I'm good. I can't think of anything either. Yeah. I think we're heading back down and... Uh, well, I don't know. This must be one of Doris Lakes. I think there's two of them. Right. So this must be Little Doris or something. Baby Doris. <laughs> Fuller Doris. Fuller Doris. Sure. Kind of pretty. All right, you guys. See you later. Guys.
goodness. It's um, October 20th. Happy birthday, birthday Eva! Eva.